so I just interviewed you to be featured on your own summit that we've been kind of coming from idea to creation. I'd love yeah. to hear about your experience. What was it like being in your spotlight for your summit? It was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, so it was pretty surreal. Like I've been imagining doing an event online for a very long time and having contacted you almost a year ago about doing one and then it, you know, I wasn't ready to do it then. And now it's just all very quickly coming together and to switch from interviewing others into being interviewed for my own event, you know, it's just pretty cool. It's really cool. And Anne Sophie is such a great interviewer. Thank you. You know, it really is, you're just such a great guide to lead into the right spaces and the right questions and to get the right information out. It's a wonderful experience and I'm, I'm just so grateful. Wonderful. And I um, also want to know how quickly, so I know we talked about doing a summit a, almost a year ago, but then it was only a few weeks ago. Like how long, how long has it been to go from, okay, I'm doing a summit to starting to put the pieces together based on what we talked about, um, the examples I gave you and all that, like how fast has it happened? So, far? so the idea really kind of sunk in, I guess, inspired maybe at the end of November, but I was like, yeah, I do one, but I wasn't really sure. Right. And it was at the start of January where it really, yeah, I hit start and I'm like, oh, I'm actually going to do this. So um, when I actually started doing the work for it, it was uh, end of the first week in January. So really from start to finish, it's it's going to be about two and a half weeks. Yeah, exactly. Two and a half weeks. From two and a half weeks from start to start of the summit itself. So three weeks from start to the end of the summit. Yeah. Which and, is um, awesomely fast. Which is incredible because I've, uh, I've heard from so many people, no, you need months to pull something like this together. And, you know, I there's still a lot of work to do. Absolutely. And I just have every faith that it's going to come together because I'm just so excited about it. You know, when the energy's there, it just, it's not work anymore. It just flows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From the moment you decided to doing it, to doing it, like you've, uh, things have really come together really quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, so I've sent you some examples, um, and different things like, how did that help you? Like what was oh. the fact of having that kind of guidance and examples? So much. The examples were in, I don't know, they were just so valuable for me because I wasn't starting from scratch. I can look at an example, which is a very different industry in what you worked in versus mine. But I had an example to refer to, which allowed me to modify and adapt and uh, just create something that was relevant to my own space. And uh, it's like having templates, really, but having information in the templates is more helpful than a blank one. So, yeah, yeah super, super helpful. Yeah, and then from there, I was able to, like, review what you did, give you feedback, and then you went and implemented it. Um, so, yeah, super fast, super quick. And also, you know, you're, we're not, you're not selling the interviews as far as planned. No. It's entirely free. Everything's uh, free. Yeah. And purposeful. <laughs> And repurposable, exactly. Yeah. Um, so do, do you have any plans on the kinds of things you want to do with the interviews afterwards? Like, Yeah. So the really great thing about the interviews is there's eight in total. I now have eight weeks of my new podcast to get started with. Exactly. Which is, you know, it's been on my wanting to do this for uh, maybe eight months. I started thinking about it eight months ago. And now I'm like, oh, now I have eight weeks of podcast content and to, to kickstart that off with, which means there's not as much pressure to keep up with initially to keep things coming out, you know? So I, I have plenty of space to interview other people for the podcast as, as I go through the next couple of months. So. Yeah. And is there anything else you're seeing being able to, um, well, I think I can just use little, little clips from some of the interviews to, to um, as certainly my own to repurpose, to share the work that I'm doing out with my audience. But also, you know, I, I foresee that I, I could do something more with them into repurposing into um, maybe a book. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure, but there's so many options. Yes. What I actually end up doing with it, time will tell. But the podcast is the number one. And then, so like we decided, we, you know, in talking, okay, you're not going to sell the interviews because you're going to be inviting people into more work with you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
Some of the- I just want to say, I really, 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 really wanted to sell the conference. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. I really just wanted to put a price on it and it, it just, I sat with it and I was just kind of compelled or inspired to not sell it so that I could help more people. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to help more people. And also it, that also drives more people to be aware of what I have to offer. And, um, hopefully, I mean, no, not even hopefully, I know that I'll get the right people in the program this way because more people you know, have access and visibility to, the, to what I'm putting out into the world. So the right leaders, because I'm doing leadership work, right leaders will be able to have access, which is really wonderful because, you know, I'm on a mission to help change, change leadership. So, yeah. Awesome. So, so yeah, so, so uh, you're doing it for free because you are following your own guidance to do that, but at the same time using it to like, what do you think is going to be the impact on your reach uh, oh. on the financial side of things. And also I'd left lastly, the, how, how has it shifted the way you show up to your work? Just uh, the decision to go and do it. Okay. So how I show up shifted in my work. So really being in my space that embodies like all of me, not just my brain, but my heart and my soul are fully engaged. I, I'm just excited, you know, and I'm just moving on faith. Um, with excitement about what I'm working on. And that just makes the flow so easy for getting the work done. And if I need to take a break, I take a break. And I don't, it's just okay because I shift back into flow without having to force it. And in terms of my reach, you know, just through this event, my reach will, is going to become a whole lot larger. Um, you know, tens of thousands of more people will be aware of what I'm, I'm doing in the world just because of the speakers who are also helping to promote the event. And, you know, people in my communities who really love what I'm putting out there, they're going to share that out more now too, right? So, I mean, tens of thousands, I don't even know how many, but definitely, and globally too. Uh, one of my speakers has a very large um, um, reach in India because part of his business is based there. So now I get access to communities there where for them it's it's awesome because they they can't afford the pricing in North America for a lot of things. So they have access to all of this free stuff where, you know, as things shift for them, you know, it'll be easier for them to decide to invest their money in something that I'm offering here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, so that's really lovely. But also in Europe and uh, all around North America, you know, that's uh, beautiful. And in terms of financial impact, you know, time will tell, but – Mm -hmm. um, with more people having access to what I'm doing, I mean, certainly there's financial benefits there too. I'm not working with such a small sphere and, you know, yeah, I need money to pay my bills and do all the things I want to do in the world. And really for me, um, you know, marrying that with doing work that's really purposeful, heart driven and soul guided is the, the best thing ever. Um, I've been in a space of very lucrative work, earning a very large amount of money each day. You know, it's not, it's not about that, but there's a benefit to that. When you marry your heart and your soul with the outside world and what it can offer back to you in terms of remuneration back, there's nothing more fulfilling than that. Yeah. 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 I think, and you know, my reflect, thank you for sharing all that. And my reflection is what I've seen is you've gotten, uh, more clear and more confident to take in fast actions and things like saying, Oh, I got to do my website now because you decided this is happening. It's going to get done. Well, it has to get done now. <laughs> like, well, now it has to get done. So they actually have like, taken a hike, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it just, yes, it has to get done. And I'm not stressing out about it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's not a decision point anymore. It just it just needs to happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's kind of like saying I need to sleep and I need to wake up tomorrow. And I'm like, well, yeah. I need a website, and it's going to happen. And my message is going to get out, and yeah. people will show up. So there's a like a new sense of confidence and assertiveness that I'm witnessing. Yes, yes. It's been a big shift there this year, <laughs> this last year. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. Thanks. I just thought I'd I'd ask because. Um, <sighs> 
I'm, I'm hoping to be able to guide more women who want to kind of use creating their own virtual speaking event as a way to um, remove the self-sabotaging habit of saying, I'll do it later. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, I'm so good at that one. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all fear, right? Yeah. You don't feel safe. It's, it goes back to the safety. Don't feel safe to put it out there. So you just put it off. Yeah. Right? So I think that's one of your superpowers is, you know, creating sp space to help people to cultivate safety. Thank you. I receive that. And oh, what was the thing you said? You said from cultivating safety, that's what sparked courage. That's, it was something like that. Uh, last time. You said it wasn't, it wasn't having courage that made me safe. It was cultivating safety. safety that uh, cultivating safety led to courage. And um, P.S., I'm using that in my own materials. <laughs> Yeah, no, you should. Yeah. That was an amazing, <laughs> amazing thing that came out of your mouth that day. I know. I'm like, oh, cool, writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, man. That's what happens when you get into this, these conversations. You find gold. So, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you um, so much. And 